All right, we are live. We are live here from Lady Davis's kitchen. <laughs> uh, there's nobody, nobody tuning in yet, but that's okay. Uh, I am Lainey Davis, contemporary romance author, and I am here with Chef Erica Bruce from Third Space Bakery. You want to tell us a little bit about your business? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, we don't act. We're not actually in a space yet, but okay. we're getting very close. Um, mm -hmm. Our goal is to be a, um, a retail bakery, you know, storefront cafe space by day, and then we're going to offer workshops and classes. Um, in the evenings and like pop-up events and have guest chefs and definitely we'll be doing some bartending classes. Yeah. So, so you'll get a taste today of how a class works. I have never taken a cooking class before, but last summer Erica taught me how to shuck an oyster and I did oh, not that's right. cut myself. You did not. No. That was exciting. Yeah. And I even <laughs> did it again on my own without you. Yeah. Without, <laughs> because I know you can do, you can do hard yeah. things. <laughs> yeah, I can do hard things. <laughs> So Eric and I know each other from soccer. Mm -hmm. She and I both play on a real life soccer team. If you read my book, Beautiful Game, you were introduced to the fictional over 30 women's soccer team, um, but we are real life members of it. Um, and we are here today because of the Kickstarter for my book, Last Call, which the backers should start to be getting in the mail right now, actually. Um, and so this is book four of my Bridges and Bitters series, which is set in a fictional bar by the same name. And the, he, the heroine of this book, Esther, is a bartender who is always coming up with amazing cocktails. Uh, so I asked Erica to come teach me how to make some of them. And what she didn't know when I invited her <laughs> is that there's no recipes for the cocktails. I just made them all up. Like I made up the whole book. So Erica's like, where are these recipes? Right. <laughs> so Erica uh, has made the recipes. Yes. I yeah. did. I worked. It was, I, you know, it was not painful <laughs> to work on some cocktails. Yeah. Uh, and so today we're going to do Pearly Contained Rage, which shows up actually in book three of the series, Speed Rail. Here's, oh, I have them in the wrong order. This is the one where Pearly Contained Rage is. And then we are doing Lavender Blues, and I'm going to be real honest, I do not remember which book <laughs> that one is from. You have to read them all. Yeah, you got to read the whole series <laughs> to find Lavender Blues. Yeah. So what should we do? What should we start with? Oh, yeah. I think we should start with, um, they're both fairly straightforward cocktails, but I think we'll start with the Fairly Contained Rage. Okay. Yeah, I think a lot There's of There's a little bit rage. more steps involved, yeah. okay. and I don't know how much in detail you want me to get into, like, bartending in general, and or... Um, I know tools nothing. That you need. Okay, yeah. so for this drink, I'll just go over what we're going to use for this drink. So um, we're going to be using a cocktail shaker, and this is what this looks like. It has, you know, the bottom part where you mix the drink, and then it has a lid, and then there's another lid on top where you would strain it out. In this cocktail, we're actually going to be using um, another strainer because okay. we're using pear puree, mm -hmm. and that I found got all like clogged up in the little holes of <laughs> this one. Um, and we're also going to be using, this is called a jigger, and this is like a way to measure. Um, I do recommend measuring when it comes to booze because sometimes it's really hard to kind of guess and estimate and then it will throw off the flavors or you like, I tend to have a heavy pour is what they call it. Sometimes my drinks will be like too strong. Mm -hmm. um, this, but you don't necessarily have to have one of these. You can also just use a regular like liquid measuring cup that you would have in the kitchen. Okay. So this one is divided. You can see one side's bigger, one side's smaller. The bigger one is two ounces and the smaller one is one ounce. Handy. Um, some of them are both one ounce. It just depends. There's all different kinds you can get. There's like tall skinny ones. Okay. Um, you can get any of them anywhere. You can get them on Amazon. Um, and then two ounces is equivalent to, um, is that right? No, two tablespoons. Yeah, two tablespoons and one ounce. So okay. two ounces would be a quarter cup. So oh. if you had a liquid measuring cup, you could measure a quarter cup of whatever. Now, if I don't have a cocktail shaker, which I don't, can I not make this cocktail or can I stick it in like a Tupperware with a lid? Um, you can actually, I was going to, I forgot to bring a pint glass. Sometimes you can, if you just have the bottom part, you can put it in um, a, a, like a pint glass on top of this. Uh -huh. I'm trying to think if you had like a, just a pint glass mm -hmm. and then you had a slightly smaller glass on top. Um, that would work with to a shake. lid to shake. Yeah. Got it. You could do like, you know, if you had a big jelly container, <laughs> you could do that. Yeah. Right. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to fill this up with ice. We have Elizabeth here. Hello, Elizabeth. 
So she's okay. using. So this one, yeah. So the base for this yeah. booze base is bourbon. Mm -hmm. And this is Woodford, Re Woodford Reserve, but you can really use. Oh, actually, this is a rye whiskey now that I look at it. And it was delicious. So maybe really any whiskey that you have. <laughs> Well, I didn't know what to buy. I only ever drink beer. I never go to the liquor store. And if you've ever been to Pennsylvania, it's like, it's really hard to get alcohol in Pennsylvania. It's, so it is challenging. I was in the liquor store just sweating. I had no idea. There were so many whiskeys. And I, I asked the clerk, I was like, I need, I need you to help me buy a whiskey for this mixed drink that doesn't exist. <laughs> It does exist now. It does now. We exist. We've willed it into existence. So that was two ounces okay. of the bourbon slash whiskey. And then I'm going to go ahead and add, this is um, pear puree that I went ahead and made from canned peaches. All I did was strain off the liquid and the syrup. Um, these were lightly sweetened. I would suggest that over like the really heavy extra syrupy ones. Okay. It's going to be too sweet. Um, and again, this is another two ounces. I'm going to measure this into here. So equal parts pear and whiskey. Right. And what I'll do, Kickstarter backers, is share these recipes with you after, uh, after we're done. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to be sweetening this with, um, this is a rosemary infused simple syrup. Mm -hmm. And there, there's also a recipe for this. It's super easy. It's equal parts. A simple syrup is always equal parts sugar and water. And you just bring it to a boil. Okay. And that's it. And, and then you can keep it in you your fridge. soaked the rosemary. And I did. I added rosemary to that. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a great way to infuse flavor. It's like any kind of cocktail. You could like, I mean, really add anything. You can like lemon peel. You could mm -hmm. add, I don't know, black peppercorns, or, I mean, like whatever. Um, so this one I've already done and I've taken the rosemary out and these will keep in the fridge for like, I think up to like three weeks. Okay. As long as they're refrigerated. So Esther as a bar owner, she would have maybe a bunch of those behind the bar. Oh yeah. But yeah. like be making them before opening. Oh yeah. You would have make them, you would have them all made ahead of time and yeah. Labeled and dated and oh, all that cool. stuff. Yeah. I mean, if you really, if you go to a fancy bar and you see all the little like tinctures that they have. I mean, it's gotten, cocktail making has gotten so much more sophisticated than when I was actually bartending, um, which I'm kind of relieved about because I think it would be. <laughs> it would be so know. much work. You have to memorize yes. all this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Like when I bartended, it was like classic cocktails. Okay. And then, you know, we'd have a bartending book if somebody ordered something really weird. Or sometimes I would just be like, I don't know that drink, you know, tell me what's in it and I'll make it for you. So then you just like, you know, deflect it to the yeah. customer. <laughs> all right. So we're adding the syrup and okay. this is three quarters of an ounce. So I'm just going to fill up the one ounce. Thing up to three quarters just kind of eyeballing that and you can adjust this right add a little bit more or hold back if you don't like sweet okay things and then we're going to add some lemon juice which is really important because this really balances out the drink and i'm going to go ahead before i squeeze and juice the lemon i'm going to prepare the garnish so she's got a really sharp knife there and she's cutting <laughs> off a wedge of <laughs> rind and then we're going to make sure when you're doing peel you want to get rid of that white part because that's kind of bitter okay that's the pith now, when I zest my lemon, I use this guy. I don't know how to do it otherwise. Yeah, that's a microplane or a rasp, which I guess was originally a woodworking tool, oh. which I think is so interesting. And I just ruined that one, so I'm going to make another one. Oh, um, I know, right? Because it's, it's live. <laughs> um, yeah, that's great for like little bits, and that's a great way to like flavor a drink. Okay. Um, but when you're drinking a drink, you don't really want to get the little pieces. Uh -huh. Oh, that makes um, sense. Yeah, so this is just going to go on the edge of the glass if I can get this white stuff off. I did not bring my sharpest knife, so. Oh, I have a stone. You can sharpen it. Okay. <laughs> it's a, to get it's off like topic. A, it's a specific knife sharpening stone. I do have that. I got it from my husband's grandmother. <laughs> That's cool. That's a good tool to have. So I was watching my bartender friend make her um, garnish behind the bar. And I don't know if I'm doing this correctly, but at home, I would not be picky. I would just be like, do it for flavor. Yeah. But I'm just trying to be a little fancy. because She's like... making shapes over here. Yeah. So I just made like a cool little, what is that shape? Is that a trapezoid? Like a... a rhombus? Yeah. And then I cut a slit through the middle. Yeah. So, all right. That's done. Now I can go ahead and juice my lemon. I the... mean, you go ahead and make a bunch of peels. Like if I was yeah. in a bar, I would, you know, use all the peel first and then I would juice it so that you don't waste anything. Okay. And then this is a great tool to have. Um, especially if you like to make margaritas. And as you can see, this is green and it's meant for limes. Okay. And they sell ones that are like slightly larger that are yellow. My mother-in-law has a yellow one. Then that is a lemon one. Yeah. But this works. I don't need to have two of these at home. So sometimes you got to like cut it down a little bit. Yeah. Cause that's a big, big that's... lemon for the, <laughs> for the lime squeezer. <laughs> Get it in there. All right. And so we're going to be adding only a half an ounce of lemon juice. Again, I can't emphasize this enough when you're making cocktails, hundred percent, you want to have fresh squeezed, um, juice okay juice, so you don't want to buy that plastic squeezy no do not buy that <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible 
I mean, this just, and I don't even like to juice like stuff ahead of time and use it because okay. you really like fresh. Yeah. It makes a lot of difference. It's just something that it'll just degrade. So in a busy bar, would Esther squeeze it fresh? Yeah, because she would use order. it. She would use it probably, you know. Yeah. But I, sometimes bartenders will squeeze fresh. You'll see them do it to, you know, to order as they're making the drinks. Yeah. All right. I knew there was a reason that I made Esther have like a limited special cocktail menu. Yes. She doesn't want to be doing 95 different things. Well, it depends how busy you are. If you're yeah. like a high-end restaurant, you're not going to be do, you know, doing, you're not going to be working like a three deep bar where people are like yelling at you for orders and right. doing shots and stuff like that. It gets kind of crazy, but yeah, like a craft cocktail bar, they'll spend a lot of time making a drink and you know, it's a totally different experience. So I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on that again. Okay. If I brought my pint glass, I could have showed you how to use that. And I'm just going to go ahead and shake it really vigorously. Okay. And this is not only to chill down the drink, but actually to dilute it. So water is a component in many cocktails and it's an important, like, like something as simple as a Manhattan, which has two ingredients in it. It's just whiskey and well, actually three. It's whiskey, sweet vermouth and bitters. Okay. And water. <laughs> Same with like a, a straight up martini. It's not just like if you took vodka or gin and chilled it and then poured it and it would, it's not, not the same it's as not the stirring same. It you with need ice. to have a dilution of the ice. Okay. It really like softens the, the, um, the alcohol and it removes a lot of the bite and it just makes it more balanced. So. Okay. All right. Ready? Here she goes. It's my arm workout. Yeah. Cause we don't work our arms clean. Soft. No. <laughs> Sometimes you'll see bartenders, you know, but I'm oh. afraid that I'll dump it down my back because yeah, that would get all over my kitchen. Yeah, yeah, that would be bad. Okay. So now I'm going to strain this. Okay. And this is a, like a coupe glass. It's very very fancy. fancy cocktail. You could yeah. do any kind of, any glass really, any, like a martini glass or whatever you wanted to do. Okay. And so it's hard to see. Can you guys see? We'll, oh. we'll show. We'll oh, give we have it a another, we have another guest. Um, mm -hmm. Melissa is here. She's intrigued by the lavender blues. That one, we're gonna do that one next. next. Oh, I'm getting some. See that pear puree really like bogs it up. Okay. So um, in the book, Esther talks about a muddled pear. Oh, okay. Um, you wouldn't know that. Uh, <laughs> I should know that. <laughs> or maybe I didn't type that. Maybe I just thought it in my mind. But I didn't know what muddling was. Well, muddling I... is a sense like making it. I mean, basically, it's the same thing as a puree. You're just okay. making the puree into the, into the. So she would just put her like chunks of pear and then take like a muddler, which looks kind of like a baton or something. And you just like a wooden yeah. and you mash, you would mash it up in here. Okay. So I just did it ahead of time. Okay. We're done. What happened to my garnish? Alrighty. And then also when you're doing something with a peel, you want to bend it, twist it. I don't know if you can see the oils come out. Okay. And then you just rub the oils around the rim of the glass. Oh, I'm learning so many things. And that will give you a little extra that lemony flavor. And then I'm just going to stick that on the edge there. And then I like this. I just picked this from my garden. Oh. So that brings out some of the um, Look rosemary. Look how pretty that is. And then when you drink it, you get like lemon and rosemary. Yeah. And I'm going to let you have the honors. Okay. I'm going to hold it close to the camera so the people can see. Look at all right, I'm going to taste it because it's noon somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's noon here. <laughs> that is so nice. Yeah, isn't that good? Yeah. Yeah. And when I read it, I thought, oh, this is a fall cocktail. And this is like we're in spring, summer. But actually, I find it to be really light and refreshing. And I would drink that. Yeah. Any time of the year. I would have yeah. no problem drinking it. I'm a whiskey person. so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you have a preference? Are you like a... Well, you don't drink cocktails. You just... Like... I do not often drink yeah. cocktails. So I learned about a mojito kind of right before pandemic. And I was like, good well, time, there, I, timing. I have a drink now. And uh, so that I, I just don't know a lot about cocktails. But you're definitely right with a garnish, like you get the yeah. aroma and the taste. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, it's nice. Ooh. It's nice and light. Um, so can I show you some of the stuff from the book? Yes, please. Yeah. So um, the the backers for this Kickstarter are getting this version of Last Call. And what makes it special is that it has uh, an interior illustration. So you can see Esther. And then here is Koa on the back cover illustration. Uh, and they also, if you back the Kickstarter, this version also has the bonus epilogue printed right there in it. So you, oh, cool. uh, you, you get to have that. Um, and because it's a marriage of convenience novel, I made <laughs> wedding invitations 
for everybody who gets a book and you're oh, going to get one. For me, thank yeah. you. Oh, this is beautiful. Should I open it? Yeah. Or is that the home on a surprise? Ruin a surprise? No, let's no. show the people. Okay. They, they're, okay. Some of this stuff was, um, some of this stuff this they know about. I don't want to get that yeah. in my mess that I made. So oh, you've got your wedding cute. invitation to the marriage of convenience. <laughs> yeah. This is great. And then there's, yeah. And then there's oh, wedding cool. favors, I book love, of matches. I love having Look matches, Andy. Oh, this is great. Oh, and there's oh, and there's a bookmark, bookmark with the cover oh, art. This yeah. is really cool. Invitation signed. This is really cool. Thank you. Yeah, the invitation is signed, and the books are signed for the Kickstarter. Backers. That's awesome. Yeah, and this is, you know, I wanted to thank you for teaching me. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll... cocktail stuff. We can put that over here so it okay. doesn't get yeah, yeah. So it doesn't dirty. get lavender on it. A mess. Oh, should we do the second one? I'm ready to do the second one. Okay. Right. I'm just going to sip this one Jeez. while you make a second one. <laughs> we should have scheduled this at five o'clock. All right. So this one made more sense. is a little more straightforward. <laughs> okay. Um, this is what you call building right into the glass, right? So instead of, you don't have to have a shaker and, you know, and then make it one place and then, you know, transfer it to another glass. Okay. And then this is a gin-based drink, which is really nice for this time of year. I want to pause because, yep. again, I didn't know anything about gin. So I was at the liquor store and this made up recipe I had written down Hendrix. I didn't know Hendrix is like a special gin. Oh, it's it has very special. A, a and it's sometimes very flavor. hard to get. Yeah. So again, I'm sweating in the liquor store. I've already borrowed the clerk one time, bothered him. And I was like, okay, now I need you to tell me about gin. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and then he went like in some sort of musty back room to find me this yeah. smaller bottle because they did have a bottle of Hendrix. It was Maybe this big and a hundred dollars. Yeah, it's pricey. Yeah. Um, it's a great gin. It's not too heavy on the juniper, which is why I like it. Oh, could I will tell you what I don't like is the bottles are like totally black and you yeah. can't see through and you can't see. So you don't know how much you have. Like left. how much do I have? And I don't know yeah. if they do that on purpose, but no, it's a great gin. Um, again, when you're mixing cocktails with alcohols and you're not drinking, like if I was drinking this as a martini. I could really appreciate its flavor profile. But when you're building a cocktail, again, you don't need to spend a ton of money on a real fancy, you know, gin or bourbon or okay. vodka or whatever. Like you, you can kind of go middle of the road. And I do the same thing when I make margaritas. Like there's a whole variety of different tequilas you can get. And you can get aged tequilas that are meant to be like, you know, just had straight up in a snifter. Like you wouldn't want to mix that into a margarita because that's just kind of a waste Okay. Of an expensive tequila. So you can just get some silver tequila, something a little bit middle of the road. Okay. But you don't want to get like the worst because then, you know, you might get a hangover. But. Well, the liquor store guy was saying that this is like a really um, floral botanical mm -hmm. gin. Yeah. Is there another kind of gin that would mm -hmm. also work if people don't want to buy Hendrix? I mean, I think almost any type of gin, again, when you're mixing it with something as flavorful as the syrup we're going to be adding. Okay. Um, because, you know, this has got the lavender in it. And so that's kind of going to, I mean, it works really well with it. But honestly, like I think you could use, I'm trying to think of a middle, like beef eaters. Oh, would I be, did see the beef eater. Yeah, I mean, for something like this. But again, if you, you know, want to make it fancy and I mean, okay. this was delicious. I mean, I'm not saying I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. We are going to go ahead and add ice to our glass. If you have like a crushed ice setting on your refrigerator, mm -hmm. this works really well with crushed ice. It's very similar to like a Moscow mule. And that's what you would use in a Moscow mule in those fancy like copper mugs. Yes. So, but we okay. just need regular ice in this in my hand. It'll be fine. Oh, yeah. And you want to really fill up the glass oh. with ice. Okay, that's more ice than I would have thought. <laughs> she's rinsing. I'm rinsing the, the pair. The <laughs> j j jigger? It's the jigger, yeah. She's rinsing the jigger. We're getting jiggy with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not at anything to drink. I know. Just for the record. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add two ounces of the gin. To the glass that and pours that pretty nicely i was worried with that wide yeah the trick is just not spilling it and just yeah of, and you see bartenders they just do real quick they're like okay. yeah, i don't know how they do it but i don't have those skills anymore all righty and then we're going to go ahead and add two ounces this is a blueberry lavender syrup i actually just made this with frozen blueberries i did a bag of frozen blueberries um sugar a little bit of water and then i had these lavender buds which i'll show you in a minute okay and was that kind of the same process as the simple syrup? Yeah, basically. But you're making it. You're and I. This one I cooked a little longer because I wanted to cook down the berries until they start to burst. 
and release their juices. And the reason I, you can't just juice raw blueberries, you can get the color. Right. And to me, like, this is a big part of this drink. It's got an absolutely gorgeous color. Yeah. And then this is what I, this is an edible. Oh, I'm just gonna... um, you can buy these on Amazon too. I don't know if you yeah, can see them, know, but they're little rose, um, sorry, not rose, they're lavender buds. Lavender buds. And then we do have a special item in there. Yeah. She'll tell you about yeah, that next. Yeah. <laughs> But I use these in my baking. I infuse like my lemon curd with them and make syrups out of them. Her lemon curd is so good. Oh my gosh. You made you made this cake mm -hmm. for a soccer party. And it was leaven, lavender, lemon curd. Oh, with blackberries. With blackberries. Yeah. It was the best cake. I'm still like, and then there was meringue on there. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. And I was gosh. thinking this would work really well with blackberries too. Because the blackberry, lavender, the blueberry, they have a similar flavor profile. Okay. So, okay. Now we're going to add um, ginger beer. This originally in the book, it calls her ginger bitters. Oh, really? <laughs> or ginger, oh. ginger something. Ginger and liqueur. I remember ginger that. Ginger liqueur. Yeah, that is and hard to find. I could not find it. Even the guy at the liquor store couldn't find it. Okay. So you're just, just filling up the it. rest of the glass. Yeah. Ginger beer was easy to find. That was at the grocery store. Yeah. And then, so what we're adding instead is lavender bitters. Yeah. So, um, and there's, you can get bad, so many different flavors of bitters these days. So you just gave that a little shake. Just a couple, like two or three. Again, add more if you like it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's totally. I'm going to give that a sniff. Yeah. 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 I don't even know. I don't know what a bitters is, but this is from Wiggle Whiskey, which Wiggle is a local Pittsburgh um, distillery. Is that mm -hmm. what we say? Yeah. yeah. And they are women owned and I love them. They make all kinds of cool stuff. Oh, it's still, yeah. They are delicious and they do really cool tours too of the. I went on just, a yeah. tour yeah. a long time really ago. I know. And then you're like, this is really interesting. And then you forget everything you learned. You're like, mm -hmm. okay. So, and then I'm just going to garnish. I had some candied ginger. Okay. And I'm just going to throw this right on top because there's so much ice. Um, you just and I, yeah, if I had fresh blueberries, I would like sprinkle some of those in there because that's kind of fun. Um, you can if you want to add the lavender. I don't know because I don't want to get it sucked up. So I'm just going to oh, leave it at that. you got me a straw? I did. Oh. And then you can just go ahead and mix that up a little bit and that's it. Okay. So, so I you can make your just syrup. Just like this? Yeah. You can oh. have your syrup made ahead of time. and My garnish sank. Oh, it's all right. It's going to be okay? It'll be your reward at the end. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to sip it. Oh, that's like juice. Right. Yeah. Oh, here comes the lavender. You get it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so nice. It's so it's really refreshing. I didn't I think, think that I could stand gin because the juniper, yeah. uh, I just really don't like the smell of that. Yeah. Um, but again, this one is not no. as juniper heavy. And I don't, I'm trying to think, I don't like juniper either. So I tend not to buy those kind of gins. So I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, I did know that fancy women drink gin. And so if you've read my Brady series, <laughs> Celeste drink gin. drinks gin all the time. And I was like... I didn't like Celeste at first, so I gave her a stinky drink. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. I really like the lavender in this. Yeah. It's yeah, nice. It's so nice. That would be really good with your cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So that's it. Pretty simple, right? Yeah. That, I felt like I could do that. Yeah. Does anybody, does anybody watching have any questions? It's, well, you we could give them a second to... Uh, think about that but what you know what's going on with third space right now i know you guys are yeah. locating a space do you have yeah. stuff happening this summer yeah we are um yes we have been teaching well they're already over now but we taught a few cooking classes at phipps they have a beautiful teaching kitchen um so that was a really nice experience and we did one for teens which is always exciting teaching knife skills to teens oh, but man. i am really passionate about teaching um older kids how to cook and um you did a camp last summer for teenagers yeah two summers in a row we did not do it this year because we're just a little too busy with the business but um so my partner beth taylor um and i um taught that camp and then our third partner is chloe newman and she right now is um running crustworthy which is a big yeah but she does sourdough breads and she sells at the bloomfield market if you if people are local okay um yeah bloomfield we're looking market. to be in garfield neighborhood because mm. we really feel like well, they need a bakery and we want to have a, like a really big community involvement. Now, when you, you were t teasing out spaces, have you, you haven't like signed papers for I'm getting close. You're getting close. I don't want to jinx anything. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> it's very exciting. And then we'll have a lot, you know, we'll still have a lot to do because they'll, we'll need to build out a kitchen and the permitting process is complicated. Mm. Yeah. Running a food business is really, really difficult. Um, not sure why that, I guess you have to be really passionate about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, um, I haven't written any, all my books are set in Pittsburgh, but I haven't written Garfield neighborhood yet. Yeah. I'm Maybe. always interested how you get your inspiration and your ideas. Um, I mean this one, Esther, 
Esther showed up first as a side character in my Brady family series. So she was the bartender in this bar that the Brady ladies hung out in. And people started to really like that side group, Foof. Um, And so I started building a series around them. I don't want to say all the way what Foof stands for because then my YouTube video will get tagged as explicit, Ah, but it's fresh out of Fs. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And I get, I get so many emails. People want to know if it exists, if it's a real club, Um, if it's a real bar in Pittsburgh. They want it to be a real club. Yeah. (laughs) I do. But you can make it real. Yeah. You know, I feel like our soccer team. Yeah. Our soccer team is pretty much. Yeah. We support each other. And if someone's having an issue, they, we talk it out. Yep. Kick it out. Yep. <laughs> well, um, let's see. Has anybody? Oh, we'll be at Don's Appliances Water oh, yes. Source. <laughs> oh, Don's... thank you, Beth. Yes, that's right. I was. <laughs> yeah. Well, Don's Appliances, first of all, is a hidden gem in Pittsburgh. If yes. you need to, like, oh you could go in there and you could say, I have this toaster from 1983 and this wire broke in it. And they have, they have. Really? The... Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they have a beautiful showroom. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, we do. We're doing a, demo, um, a cooking demonstration um, around indoor like, grilling. They have a beautiful grill set up. So oh. that is on. Did she give the date yet? June 28th. June 28th. <laughs> that is a really cool partnership. Mm-hmm. You're going to do a demo in an appliance store. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah. and people come and, and they BYOB and then we demo oh. what we're making and then they get to sample it. So it's really fun. Oh, yeah. So we're cool. just trying to get out there and just spread the word um, as much as we can. And then, uh, it, you know, we'll probably come up with some other pop-ups. Um, we're doing the Veg Fest, mm-hmm. which is, I know Beth probably knows this. I'm out of town. I'll be in Australia. Oh, yeah. um, I'm, I'm going to Australia too with her. <laughs> <laughs> Summer grilling cooking class. Beth yes. Said. Thank you, Beth. Yeah. yeah. And that's um, organized through the East Liberty Chamber of Commerce. Oh, so, okay. Mm-hmm. I love those kinds of partnerships. Now you and I teamed up a little while yeah. ago. Erica does really cool baked goods for Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. So we had done like a book and I did my bet noirs and my yeah. flourless chocolate cake. Yeah. yeah. Um I I think it I, I imagine there'll be a really cool Valentine's Day cooking. Oh yeah. I we are really, really excited about collaborating with other local businesses. Another reason why we like our field, because there's tons of these little businesses and some of them, um, that's nothing I should talk about. We're a co- we're a cooperative. Okay. So it's a different type of business structure. And we had to learn a lot just to learn how to get set up and, and we're still learning. Um, but we're basically uh, it's a setup where it is a worker owned cooperative. Okay. So people come and then if they're interested in becoming a member, you pay dues and then you buy into the business and every member gets one vote. So everybody has a stake in how the business is run. And, um, and it's a little bit well, it's quite different than how most food businesses um, have been run in the past. So we're really excited about setting this as an example, because there's not a lot of this in Pittsburgh. I mean, we have the East End Food Cooperative, which is a little bit different, but similar. Um, one of my favorite places to shop. So. Um, so, yeah. So that's a lot about collaborating with other other local businesses and That's a so lot of cool. community involvement. Yeah. Figure out what people want in the community. I love that. And that is a lot of what Kickstarter is about too. Mm-hmm. It's this community of people who want to support creatives. Um, and my books will be on retailers eventually, but the people who tend to be on Kickstarter like to support people through that platform. Right. Um, and it's super important, right? Because yeah, yeah it's really hard as a small business yeah. owner to get started and yeah. I mean, the way that this Kickstarter worked for me this time, I was writing this book anyway, but having it come out on Kickstarter gave me the funds that I needed to get it ready to go up on retailers. And I was actually, you can see this is the Kickstarter version. This is what it would look like when Amazon prints it. So you can see the colors aren't as rich or as nice. And it just, so Kickstarter just lets me do really cool things That's like great. having the internal cover and yeah, so I'm excited for this to then launch on, on retailers, thanks to the uh, right. backer support. All right, let's see. Uh, oh, VegFest is August 5th, if you're a local person. We have one other comment. Oh, she says it's so much fun. Thank you, Lainey and Erica. Melissa says that. Um, oh, look, when I click on it, it, it puts it up on the screen. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know I was doing that this whole time. <laughs> look at that. Ah, I'm learning so much. Um, Erica, thank you for doing this for me. Oh, thanks for having me. This was fun. Yeah, I, 
I really loved offering this opportunity to my backers and yeah. you put so much work in at home. Oh no, honestly, it was not, it was not torture at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the last thing I did want to say, you had made a, a non-alcoholic version of this one. For your I did. Mom. Yeah. I just, I left out the gin. Okay. As simple as that. So if someone yeah. isn't drinking alcohol, mm -hmm. same process, yep. just no gin. Yep. Yeah. And, and your mom loved it. She told me. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that's going to be the end of our broadcast. Thank you all for tuning in and backing the book and uh, check out third space bakery in the bio link for this video. I put the social media handles for third space where you can find and, Erica and, and the her. recipes if they want to make. Yeah. So I will share those. the recipes with, uh, with my Kickstarter backers. Great. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thank you everyone.